Good evening, everybody. Once again, it's my pleasure to welcome you to Bishop Eaton and our Redemptorist Monastery here in Liverpool, just to keep this tradition going of sharing a thought with you each week. It's actually quite late. You may even be able to hear the monastery clock sounding 8 o'clock tonight. But once again, I'm hoping just to have a day pretty well to myself tomorrow. Um, I think many of you know, on a Thursday evening, from time to time, I enjoy going to the Philharmonic. Uh, but last Thursday, I was uh, very fortunate in that I was asked to make up the fourth member of uh, a doubles for tennis. And we were down at the Wavertree Indoor Courts and had a very enjoyable evening. Um, and the same is going to happen tomorrow evening, so I'm quite looking forward to that again. Just grateful to be able to get out on the court. Um, and until I become a complete passenger to my partner, hopefully I'll be able to keep going. In the wider scene of the parish and its life, again, I, uh, the parish is, uh, I can only say how encouraging last night's meeting was. Great representation from both parishes as we thought about the new journey in faith. Um, Many people uh, so willing, so generous, and I think uh, we'll be able to work out probably a couple of pretty useful uh, courses, including, I think, the Alpha course. I must say we need to do a bit more of an assessment of what everybody's written. We took uh, the opportunity of giving people the, the chance to write down uh, what they were hoping to be able to contribute and also what they were hoping to be able to receive. And so we're going to work on that. Um, and also we were supported by um, Elizabeth Parsons from the diocese, who was also uh, very enthusiastic and keen to help us, and also for us to help her. And we even touched into the area of marriage preparation. So there are various things uh, working well there. Uh, and I really do feel, once again, the Spirit of God is, is, is prompting us and just trying to be attentive what the Spirit is saying. That was the, the last thing I put in the bulletin, wasn't it? Uh, let's see where the, where the Spirit blows. And um, alongside that, when I mentioned that shrine ministry, uh, somebody who came to last night's meeting, uh, has also got involved with our associates program. As you know, Father Maurice Amani is looking after those who make a, a real commitment to work alongside the Redemptress, who don't take sort of solemn vows or anything. But um, there is that commitment to develop an understanding of our special charism and to work with us. And we've quite a number of people up here in the Northwest now uh, and indeed in different parts of the country, uh, including, of course, up in our, around our house in Scotland. So Father Morris has been working away at this now for quite some time. Um, and this person, John Elcock, uh, wrote a remarkable response to my suggestion that we think about shrine ministry with our icons. Um, so I'm inviting him to address the two parishes at the end of the church's year, which is in a couple of weeks' time. We have the Feast of Christ the King uh, on the third Sunday of this month. So um, John has graciously agreed to share some thoughts, um, particularly so that we can look at this whole question of lay ministry of how we can develop this support of one another uh, at a time when there is a decline in the number of clergy. And there's, there's no question about that. We know that. Um, we don't want to panic about it. Uh, we don't want to exaggerate it. But it's very real. However, alongside that, uh, next, not this coming Sunday, but in a week's time, 10 days' time from now, um, there is a special day which the Redemptorists have been devoting in the last few years to praying for our Redemptorist charism all over the world and praying for vocations. And our new general, Father Rogerio Gomez, has written to us and asked us to share with you on that Sunday. Uh, it's a slightly tricky one for us because it always coincides <laughs> with our Remembrance Day. Um, Nevertheless, we, we will try and mix and match. Uh, obviously, we want to remember those who gave their lives in the particularly, we think, of the two wars, the two last wars of the last century. But, of course, there have been so many wars since. Um, and in a sense, we're, we're on the fringe of this awful war still in Ukraine. And as you know, uh, being able to support our confreres in Ukraine and so on. So, sadly, war just doesn't go away. And uh, we continue, therefore, to pray for those people who are 
brave enough to um, fight for freedom in our world. So all those things, we'll, we'll try and make sure that we get the balance right, but um, I just point those things up for you, that we will be um, asking you to pray with us, that our charism will continue, that uh, if God wills it, that there will be more young men. Even in this part of the world, I'm not giving up completely on it. I feel there's, there's something we need to take on board, but certainly if there was a group of young men out there who think, gosh, well, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind having a shot at this. There, there is a, a job to be done here for the Lord, and the Redemptorists have been given this special charism in the life of the church, and um, we were really encouraged by the fact that our general chapter seems to have gone so well and been so positive and come out with a message of hope. Um, and, of course, the, the message of redemption is precisely a, a message of hope. So we'll continue to try and cultivate that and look at it from as many angles as possible. Um, and today I, I really just wanted to say another word of thanks for all the encouragement that continues to come from so many different quarters. So tonight, as we end this day, which is, of course, All Souls Day, so we've been praying for all those who've gone before us, all our loved ones, family, friends, confreres, benefactors, um, we had lovely masses and good congregations in both churches today. It's, it's very encouraging and rewarding. So I just want to end the day by offering a prayer for all our loved ones um, and also for those who are crying out in our world for need. We, we hear of so many of these awful tragedies, uh, that footbridge that collapsed, I think it was in India, um, that terrible uh, crush in Seoul, uh, in South Korea, and um, we, we, we hear of these uh, terrible tragedies where so many people are grieving, and of course the, the famine um, in Africa, in a number of countries now in Africa, uh, as well as of course this dreadful war in Ukraine. So let's gather our prayers tonight. Let's be conscious of our common humanity. Let's pray that the Lord will deepen our faith in his redeeming presence. Let's beg the prayers of our Blessed Lady, our Mother of Perpetual Succor. Lord, you know us. You know all our needs and the needs of our world. We entrust ourselves to you, Lord. Help us to discern what you are saying to us at this particular time. Fill us with renewed confidence and hope, Lord, in all that you will do. Through us. And unite us, Lord, in your love. And bless our two parishes as we strive to discern what it is you want for us here and now. We beg the prayers of Our Lady. Let's just say together the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May the Lord reach out and bless your homes and families and fill you with the joy and peace of his abiding presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me, and uh, I look forward to continuing these messages week by week, and continuing to see our parishes develop and flourish in the wonderful way that they are doing. Thank you.